hello good evening everyone hello good evening everyone hello thanks for joining me this my name is Ikaira Collins I am the CEO of Yorkies of Houston and we are doing our summer series where I am coming on every every Wednesday evening from 9 30 to 10 and we're going to be discussing different hot topics that has to do with um, your pets and hopefully that it will help you become good pet parents. So tonight we have some great topics. I'm going to do a quick recap of last week's topics and then we're going to go right into tonight's topics because I don't want to have you on too long. So let me know where you're um, coming from. So if you're in the Houston area, let me know what side of town you are. If you're outside of uh, Houston or Texas, let me know where you're joining us from so um, I can shout you out later. But thank you all for joining. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna waste anyone's time, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So last week's topics was about summer safety, and I, when I got off, I re realized that I didn't talk about paw safety. So we have to remember that um, in Houston, it's very, very hot if you're located in Houston. And so um, you, make, you wanna make sure when you walk your dogs and you're walking them on concrete that you, do, that you use some type of protective on their paw or you walk them in uh, early mornings or late evenings. So if, uh, the concrete is so hot that you can't walk barefoot you don't want you don't want to walk your dog barefoot either on that concrete you want to walk them either in the grass or walk them during times when it's cooler and if you got your dogs from Yorkies of Houston we give you a care guide and we tell you you don't take puppies out that are not fully vaccinated in grass remember that so we believe that your dogs needs to be at least 16 weeks or older before they go out in grass but um, that is important that dogs do go out because they need to be potty trained. So just remember um, to make sure you protect your dog's paws. They have different creams you can put on them. Of course, you can always wear some shoes. So we have our Amazing Paws Boutique. I'm gonna do a shout out for Amazing Paws Boutique so you can um, come and visit us in person or go to Amazing Paws at store, get your dog some shoes so you can walk them in style. You also wanna use a harness for small dogs. So you don't wanna use a collar and leash because with a collar, you're gonna pull on their trachea. And over time, that's going to damage your dog's trachea. So you don't want to use a collar. You want to use a harness. And so make sure you find those extra, extra small harnesses, which we do carry at Amazing Paws Boutique. And, um, and so you can have your dog safe this summer. So that's all I want to say about that. I also have an update for the dog food recall. So I did some research, um, additional research this week, and I talked to a lot of pet store managers and um, some dog nutritionists and some more veterinarians and come to the conclusion that none of the dog foods are being pulled from the shelves just yet. Reason being is because there are 77 million dogs in the U.S. alone. And these um, FDA uh, cases were only 500 cases out of 77 million dogs. So they're still under investigation. Um, Neutro, which is the brand that Yorkies of Houston prefers, only had 10 cases out of those 500. So none of the foods are being actually pulled. So I just want to tell you, proceed with caution. Remember, we discussed um, cooking organically if you can. Um, if you missed last week's live, we did upload it on Yorkies of Houston YouTube channel. So you want to make sure that you follow us and subscribe on YouTube. And this video will also be uploaded by tomorrow on our YouTube channel. So um, catch the replay if you can. And you can hear all about the different dog foods that were recalled. And But you can go ahead and still feed with caution. And we're gonna do some more videos later on, um, hopefully within the next couple of months on how to level up your dog food. And so, cause that's really what it's coming down to. If you have to feed the dry kibble, the dry kibble has lots of things in it that are not healthy for your dog. Lots of chemicals to help preserve them. So you wanna level up that food to make sure your dog is getting what they need. And so we do have some, um, some videos already on our YouTube channel that tells you about all of the different vitamins that we recommend. But we also have some, what I call food toppers that we uh, give our dogs as well that help such as like probiotics and I uh, give my dogs um, chia seeds and coconut oil and salmon oil and the list goes on and on and on. So uh, we'll do a level up video but even better than that, we are having a Yorkies of Houston day camp. So this is 
um, very fresh hot news right off the press. It's going to be on August 3rd, and we're only accepting 10 people, 10 participants. So um, look for that flyer. It should be coming out within the next few days. And we're really excited because we've been having people ask us for the last couple of years, um, do we offer something like that? Because their children might be interested in getting a puppy, but they're not sure if they're responsible enough or how they would interact with the puppy. So this is a great time. And this is not only just for children, it's for adults as well if you want to sign up. And you can come and ask your questions. We'll actually have a cooking class involved. We'll cook some organic food, and it's going to be great. So I'm really, really excited to offer that. Again, it's Yorkies of Houston Day Camp, and it's on Saturday, August 3rd. And if we need to open it up for Saturday, August 9th, we will. Um, we have not opened it up. Uh, just yet because on August 9th is the tax-free weekend in Houston and I didn't want to compete with that But right for right now we do have August 3rd open and it'll be for the first 10 registrants and I'll let you know more information about that pretty soon All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go into um, Our topic up for tonight, which is emergency vet care. So it's the summertime. We're all taking vacays, right? If we haven't taken one, we probably have one planned. And um, some of y'all even taking your fur babies with you on vacation because a lot of hotels are pet friendly now. And so um, you want to um, make sure that you are aware if you are taking your dogs on vacation, or even if you're still staying local in the city, aware of what would you do in case of emergency. So let's just say it's, um, Let's say it's midnight and you decided to take your dog for a walk and your dog ends up cutting its paw. What are you going to do? Are you going to wait till tomorrow morning until your vet office opens up or are you going to find an emergency vet? So these are the questions you need to ask yourself because the first thing you need to do is be prepared, plan ahead. You know, when you plan ahead in anything in life, that's going to make you be more successful. So um, you always want to search for the vet and hopefully you already know where the emergency veterinarians are in your area and um, call ahead. So um, I'm sharing the story with you because I recently experienced this. Um, most of you know about Dior, which was my exotic uh, white Yorkie that passed away about two weeks ago. And we had this experience with emergency veterinary clinics. We actually had to go to three different ones. And so I'm going to share a, a snippet of that story with you tonight. And so you can learn from my mistakes and from our staff's mistakes. And, um, and then also um, just other people I've talked to and just my, my past experience with ER vets is very different from a regular veterinary's um, office. So you always want to call first because the first thing we did is we Googled. So we Googled, you know, what emergency vets are open because it was like 4 a.m. Our vet didn't open until 7.30 and we just went. So the first place we went to, as it said, it was a 24-hour ER veterinarian, but no vet was there. Now, they had an office person there, and they didn't even tell us until after all the paperwork was filled out that the vet was not even there. The vet was at home in the bed, and they told us it would be another 45 minutes before the vet showed up. Now, if this is a true emergency, you know, time is of the essence. This is life or death. So they did give us the option of waiting the 45 minutes or going to the next closest 24-hour veterinarian place. So, um, of course, we decided to leave, and we went to um, a second 24-hour emergency vet. And um, tonight I'm not giving names of vets because, you know, this might be an investigation ongoing process. Um, but I will tell you that um, I, we're located in southwest Houston. And so um, a part of what we have learned being in business and being an entrepreneur is marketing is everything. You don't have to be the best business, but you can have the best marketing and still get a lot of customers, okay? So um, the second place we, we went to is really, really popular. I would say they're probably about the second most popular ER vet in the greater Houston area. And when we went there, they did have you know lots of employees on staff. And they seem very compassionate, very welcoming. Um, however, um, that place um, immediately told us, you know, uh, we, before we uh, see your dog, you need to pay for the triage. So some of you might know that, that term triage, but basically before we diagnose your dog, we need 750. So we're, you know, so the second thing I want to tell you tonight is be prepared. So. Um, it's not like a veterinary office, your regular vet who will see your dog and then you go pay at the end. Emergency vets want you to pay up front. So 
the number one thing was to call first to see if someone's if they have a vet available tell them what's going on see if it's a true emergency if you need to come to them or if you can wait to go to your regular veterinarian and the second thing is be prepared to pay so um, vets do take care credit now so if you have care credit you can use care credit at the emergency veterinarian offices they have another thing called scratch pay which is just another option of getting a loan to pay for um, your veterinary care um, but or they take cash or credit card but before um, most of them diagnose your dog they want the money up front so for us they said we need 750 okay pay the 750 then they did a diagnosis it wasn't the correct diagnosis but they did a diagnosis and then they uh, said okay we need another 3500 for a treatment okay and that 3500 was supposed to be for 48 hours so emergency veterinary clinics they charge you per hour some is for 24 hours some is for 48 hours some is for 12 hours all of this was eye-opening to me because I didn't know. You know, it's not like human care where, you know, you get billed at the end. No, all of this had to be paid before we left or before the dog was even treated. So, again, this is information that you need to be aware of and know, you know, before you go to an emergency um, veterinarian. And, you know, as, as just to take, I'm not being biased tonight. I'm just letting you know this is like my experience. So, you know, I don't want anyone to, you know, think that I'm saying not to go to an emergency veterinary um, place, but I'll just let you know my experience. And um, this is my first experience with going there. Um, so I've, I've had a couple of experiences and I've talked to some of my customers who've been before, and these, this has been their experience as well. So in general, I'm just letting you know um, our story, basically. So we don't sound, so I don't sound biased. And and so um, you're an informed consumer because I always want people to be informed and know how to handle a situation. Okay, so um, in a veterinary clinic, dogs are triaged, meaning that um, the sickest dogs are seen first, and um, and then the ones that are not sick, they're seen you know later on, and um, from there. Um, you um, it's recommended that you have the dog's medical record they're going to ask you a lot of questions about the dog's history um, we also recommend that your dog be up to date on vaccinations um, we have two veterinarians that we go to um, one we really we really love but he's very old school and so he does not have an electronic medical record which can be frustrating sometimes so because we know he doesn't have that you might want to have that somewhere where you can grab it or be able to get to it so you can give it to um, the veterinary clinic um, or if your if your vet has electronic medical record you'll be able to have them send that over um, to this ER vet so they can treat your dog properly so that's something that you want to be aware of um, another thing is if you feel like um, that vet um, well, you want to make sure that they share the treatment plan with you. You want to know what they're treating your dog for. You want to be involved in that treatment plan. And then it's okay to get a second opinion. And so just like if you were diagnosed as some, with something, um, you want to get a second opinion um, before you make a final decision. And so um, if the place is being very aggressive with you about um, getting that second opinion, that might not be the place where you want to keep your dog at. And it's okay to move your dog. And if you want to move your dog, I find out that it's something called AMA, just like with humans. And it's um, called going against medical advice. And so um, you want to make sure that you express with them that, hey, I'm not in agreement with you with this treatment plan and I need to move my dog to another place. And um, you sign a paper and you, you do that. Um, so that kind of gets me going to um, the area of Dior's story just a little bit. And this is probably going to be the last night we talk about Dior. Um, but I just wanted to share my experience with you with, um, I did tell y'all last week that Dior was bitten by a bee in her ear. And um, we didn't know at first, you know, that, that that was the case. We just knew how the condition we found her in. She was very lethargic, um, you know, barely breathing, barely there. When we took her to the first place, you know, filled out the paperwork, didn't know was in a vet there. So that was kind of time wasting. Took her to the second place. The second place had people there, but they thought she had swallowed something poisonous. They wasn't really sure. They said it could have been a bite, but it couldn't have been a bite. And they were really focused on pumping her stomach. And they gave us some plasma transfusions, but the bee stingers were still in her ear. So every time they gave her a transfusion, she still reacted because the stingers were still in her ear. So at this point, 
I'm talking to my normal vet and I'm like, okay, the treatments they're doing are not working. So what else is there? You know, I'm doing my research. I'm talking to my healthcare friends. I'm trying to figure out what other plan of actions do we have? And when I went back to talk to the ER vet and, you know, let them know, hey, have you tried this? Can you try this? They were not open to those plans of treatments that I was recommending. So at that point, I wanted a second opinion. So um, I did do an AMA and I moved her to a third veterinary office. Now this third veterinary office is actually owned by Mars. Now I don't know if y'all know Mars. Mars is the M&M people. And if you remember the M&M people, the M&M people are well known for really great commercials. Now I'm not going to say that their care wasn't good. You know, they, they were good veterinarians, but you know, I didn't know that Mars knew about veterinary care. Well, they probably don't, but they know that people love their dogs. They know that people are going to go the extra mile to take care of their dogs. And so, you know, I thought that was quite interesting if you understand what I mean. So, um, so that, that particular vet found the bite right away. Stinger still wasn't removed, but um, they did do the alternative treatment that I requested and so forth, so forth. So um, just letting you know that you have to be involved in your dog's treatment plan. Um, you can't just leave it up to the vet to know everything. You have to question and make sure that, you know, everything is being taken care of. Um, I do have a healthcare background and I'm used to treating patients holistically, meaning that you have a healthcare team. You have the nurse, you have the doctor, you have a social worker, you have the respiratory therapist, you have all these different um, disciplines working together to treat the whole patient. Well, I didn't really see that in the ER veterinary places that we were at. I saw them treating a, a single problem. So, you know, from my perspective, I felt like everything, the whole um, gamut wasn't being treated in particular. And maybe that was just me because I'm from a healthcare background. But um, basically, I'm saying all that to say that um, you have to pay attention to what's going on. And um, Dior let me know that, you know, um, she was very resilient. So um, I started asking questions like, okay, so how long does a dog live that has an anaphylactic reaction? Well, their answer was normally they die immediately or within two or three days. And finally, you know, by like that following week, they were like, well, we don't know what else to do with her because we thought she'll be dead by now. They actually said those things. So, um, you know, you have to, you know, pay attention to the veterinarians. And, and at that point, you're kind of like, all right, so if you don't know what else to do, why is she here? So, um, you know, you have to know to just, um, sometimes you have to move on, you know. So we did eventually take take to her home and bring her back home and, you know, let her just be in peace. And so, um, I have a lot of, I have, I have a lot of questions on, um, on Instagram. I have Instagram and Facebook going at the same time again. So I'll, I'll try to take questions at the end just so that, um, I don't interrupt the flow if, if that's okay with you all. So if you did have questions and I missed them, then, um, I'll give y'all a few minutes to ask me some questions at the end. Um, so basically, um, that's what I want to share with y'all about navigating the ER um, visits that, you know, it's not like a regular veterinary. Some, sometimes you can wait to the next day or, in, or a few hours for your veterinary to open and some things you can't wait for. And I'm not discouraging anybody from going. I'm just saying when you go, make sure you do your research, make sure you ask questions. And if you don't feel comfortable, make sure that you let them know that you don't feel comfortable. And maybe you might have to move your dog to another facility or bring your dog home. So, and it's okay if you do that. So um, for us, you know, they wanted to euthanize her from day two. We were not ready to do that. I don't believe in euthanization um, unless it's just, you know, a horrific accident or something like that. But if a dog is, is up walking around or eating or using the restroom, I feel like they're trying to live. And for Dior, she was responsive to us. So um, I didn't want to euthanize her. So um, so we did, like I told you, eventually brought her home with us. But um, I know a lot of the emergency facilities, they do um, say that that is a peaceful transition and that's the way that they try to get you to go. Um, but like I just said, just, you know, make sure that you're not being pressured into making that decision um, because sometimes it's a monetary game um, for them. And so um, make sure that that's a decision that, you know, you, you can be okay with. And um, which will lead me to discussing our topic for next week. So I'm going to do a small introduction for our topic for next week, which is on resiliency. 
And um, resiliency is the capacity to recover quickly from a traumatic situation. And so we have a, a speaker that's going to speak next week. I won't be the speaker. Um, her name is Latasha Misha. And Latasha and I are both educators. We love empowering people through education. And she's also an art advocate. So if you have any children with special needs, children with ADHD or ADD, um, or need different modifications in school, um, you don't want to miss her talk on resiliency next week. You want to get her information and contact her. So she can come to your R's when school starts. If you need help with 504 information, she is the person. When she walks in the room, uh, people notice and uh, she demands attention and she gets the job done. So I'm really excited for her to come and speak to you all. She also has been a Yorkie mom in the past. She's had um, Yorkies. She had a two pound Yorkie. So she'll be able to explain to you all um, the life, you know, because a lot of people want the small, small, small Yorkies and they don't realize the care that they need as adults, you know, and the demand that um, is on you. You know, it's more than just having this little cute dog that you can take pictures with for Instagram. Um, these dogs require um, more, they eat more. Um, you have to, they require more attention. And so uh, she'll be able to share that, that story with you all as well. But I'm really excited for her to come next week and talk to you all about resiliency. And so, um, so that will be uh, next Wednesday at 9.30. And then the following week, I'll be back and we'll discuss um, our new services, which uh, will be about um, afterlife care. Because we realize as going through all of this, that there is not a lot of um, afterlife pet care services um, in our area of, of Houston. And so my family and I are putting together um, some new business plans to um, bring those services to you all so that, um, you know, you can um, be at peace to know that, um, you know, your dog is transitioning well, um, even with pet hospice and um, with pre pet crematories and um, beyond. So um, we're, once those are finalized, um, we definitely will share more information with you about that. And um, um, also the topic for the week after next will be about um, our foster program. So I know a lot of people have asked me about foster care and our partner programs and how they work and I will go into great detail. That will be on the 24th about the foster care program, the partner program, and um, I probably have a bonus topic too. So I like throwing those bonus topics in there just to let you um, know what's, what's new in um, the pet world. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this on tonight. I don't like keeping y'all on too long. Um, there's one more thing that I do have to say that I promised Dior that I was gonna do, and and this that is this, okay? Um, Dior kept a really great attitude during this whole entire process. Um, I don't know if you all got a chance to read her obituary. I took it down off of Instagram. Um, it's on our website and it's still on Facebook. But um, she was a talker of our, of our group of puppies at, at our house and she was only eight months old. And so she would always make sure that we talk to her. We had to say good morning. We had to uh, talk to her in the evening when we put her to bed. She loved to talk and so, um, and when and when she was going through her health treatments, um, it was the same way. She was she was cognizant to us. The doctors would say, "Oh, you know, Dior's demeanor. She's just she is very grim. She's just not doing very well." And she would look at us and like you know like and roll her eyes and like look at us like you know these people you know they're so negative. You know she could talk. That's what she would say. And so we would play worship music for her, and you know she would just calm down and enjoy it and so we had a really good time so i would like encourage her and i would say declarations of her like dior you're god's greatest warrior dior you know we're um, mommy's doing everything to get you out of here but you have to fight to win and we used to just you know have a great time with the time we had with her while she was going through these health treatments and so during this time I would pray over her as well. So I got this revelation um, a couple of days before she passed because um, the, one of the reasons why I started the exotic Yorkies, I wasn't a big fan of the colored Yorkies at first because a lot of people were saying, oh, those are not real Yorkies. You know, they have to be mixed with something to be colored. And so, um, but also as an entrepreneur, I understand that if you don't follow the wave and if you don't meet the customer's needs and expectations, you will be left behind. So I had to do my research and, and figure out, you know, who are the best breeders to um, begin to do the exotic Yorkies with? I'm sorry, my babies are like up and they're waiting to be put to bed tonight. So they're allowed tonight. So, um, so anyways, long story short, um, 
I, I had a conversation with God, and I told God that I wanted to do the exotic Yorkies because I wanted to donate a, um, a percentage of their proceeds to different nonprofit organizations. And that was my whole point of, of, of actually adding the exotic lines to the Yorkies of Houston program. Well, during this process, you know, I was like, okay, well, we, that's why we need you where to live because we need these white Yorkies and they're supposed to be part of our nonprofit sector because we actually do have a 501c3 for Yorkies of Houston. And God told me, I don't need your money. These nonprofits don't need your money. What we do need is for you to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. And so um, lots of people call us, lots of people come to see us, and they're looking for love. They have been through things in life, been through traumatic situations, and uh, whether it's their health, whether it's divorce, whether um, it's job situations, whatever it is, their children, they have been through heartbreak, they've been through grief, and they're looking for love. Whether it's a, a previous pet that passed away, and um, sometimes we don't always take the opportunity to let them know about the unconditional love of God. And so um, I am getting out my comfort zone tonight and telling everyone, telling the world through this Facebook Live and this Instagram Live that um, Yorkies of Houston is telling you, if you are that person that has been brokenhearted, that, has, uh, that is going through grief, going through trauma, um, and that you're looking for love, that um, God is love, and um, he loves you and accepts you just where you are. And, um, and Dior um, wants you to know that as well. And so um, in any time that you need to be encouraged, you know, we, Yorkers of Houston is here to do that for you all. So um, hopefully everyone um, um, understands that tonight. And um, I'm totally out of my comfort zone because I told, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I know some of my friends would tell you otherwise, but um, I don't use that. I don't use my Yorkies of Houston platform in that manner. But I did want to let you all know that um, I made this promise. And I want to keep the promise, and so that promise is to let you all know that um, God loves you. And so, um, if you ever um, want to do business with Yorkies of Houston, um, you will know that through our dogs. Our dogs are, are prayed for every night. Um, they listen to worship music and their love, and we pray that they all go to the good homes and share that unconditional love with you all as well. So on that note, we are going to end tonight's live, and um, if you have any questions, I'll take a few questions. Anybody? Anybody? You're welcome. Okay. Well, I thank you all for staying on and listening. I appreciate your encouragement. I appreciate y'all taking the time to, um, to be a part of these lives. And hopefully you all will have a great rest of the week. Good night.